Hey, welcome to Extra Healthy-ish, your podcast from Body and Soul. I'm your host, Felicity Harley. To celebrate 2021, the good bits, we're giving you, dear listeners, our top 10 most listened to Extra Healthy-ish episodes. On this ep, I'm chatting with the inspirational and esteemed Dr. Nikki Stamp. She's a cardiothoracic surgeon, actually one of only 11 female heart surgeons in Australia. She's also an author, podcast host, and she's hosted health episodes for Catalyst. I got her on because I wanted her to share her wisdom, her healthish wisdom on how to stay, well, healthy in life. Dr. Nikki Stamp, thank you so much for coming on Extra Healthy-ish. Now, I ask this question for everyone and especially you as a doctor. How do you stay extra healthy-ish in your life? You drink wine, right? That's okay. I, I do. <laughs> Not a lot because I'm a bit soft when it comes to my <laughs> drinking. I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm that person you can't take out. Um, but honestly, imperfectly. Look, I am. Uh, I think there's this kind of health halo around anyone who's a healthcare worker um, and doctors, you know, for sure. That People think that just because you're a doctor and particularly because I like to talk at length <laughs> sometimes um, about how to be healthy that I... I, you know, I do it perfectly and I definitely don't, (laughs) you know, I forget to take tablets I'm meant to take. I book my pap smear a bit later than I should, all those kinds of things. I have the same struggles as anyone else. But honestly, you know, as, as cliched as it sounds, the most important things in my life to be healthy are um, exercise. It keeps me on the most even keel, um, sleep. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyone who knows me, I'm not overly pleasant <laughs> without a lot of sleep. Um, and, you know, keeping, uh, keeping my friends and family around, those are the best things for me. I mean, when we, sure. we <laughs> talked about in Healthyish about social media and all the things that are coming at us to, you know, make us feel healthier, mm. but really the fundamentals are, are the things you just said. So what does health look, mean to you? What do you think a healthy person looks like and feels like? I think that that's a really good question because there is like a textbook definition of health. There is like someone has sat down and said, we're going to define this. And it's, you know, emotional, physical, um, societal, environmental. I think that was a WHO, those, you know, didn't they? Don't they have right? the WHO? Yeah, they I do. can't think yeah. of it off the top of my head, but they have a definition of what health means. They do. They yeah. do. Um, and a lot of people have called that into, into um, question, you know, because that's just what we like to do in science. We like to be like, can this be better? Um, but... You know, I think that health, what may, what is health to one person can differ, right, to the, to the next person. Um, so for someone who has cancer, their definition of health may be that they got a really positive test result, that, you know, or that their treatment's going well. Um, for someone with mental health concerns, it might be that they had a really good day um, and their mood felt better and so on and so forth. So I think, you know, we've got to be very very mindful that what is healthy to one person, you know, can be different to the next. So for me, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, my physical and emotional health is really important. You know, having healthy relationships is really important to me. Um, and to, to help that helps with my physical and mental health, you know, as someone who works in the healthcare system, I'm really passionate about having a robust healthcare system because I think, well, I know that really impacts on the health of, of our, of our set as individuals and as our society, health equity is important to me, you know, healthy community, healthy environment. Um, so, you know, I think it, it's, it's much more complex than probably what we would immediately think of off the top of our head. I think off the top of our head, we would think about, you know, looking a certain way, um, you know, going for a run or whatever every day. Um, and in reality, once you start to dig into what, what that means to you or what it means to society as a whole, it's complicated and it's, and it's probably a lot, lot different than you'd expect. Yeah. I think you make a good point about that in your book you wrote a few years ago, um, pretty unhealthy mm-hmm. it, about the importance mm-hmm. of questions, questioning your motivations for being healthy, mm-hmm. because where can these lead us astray and down the wrong path? Yeah. So I, I mean, just, a step back on that book, I suppose, is that I started to think that there was a problem with the way that we were talking about health. When I was, um, I was actually flying home from Heathrow. Um, flying, isn't that a novel experience? Oh, what is that? Talk what is that at the moment? <laughs> what is that? Heathrow from Heathrow. Another country. Where? Where? Oh my what? goodness. <laughs> 
a plane. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know if people remember that you do this, but before you get on a plane, you go and walk around the shops in the airport. <laughs> that's, that's what I was doing. And I was like in the, um, you know, the news agency and I just saw all these magazines of, um, you know, predominantly women's magazines um, looking at, you know, here's how to get a six pack in two weeks and um, here's how to look your healthiest for summer and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, this is the problem. Well, it's not the problem, it's a problem, but this is a big problem. We're being constantly being told that our health is contingent on looking a certain way. Um, and every month with every or every day, even with every news article or magazine that comes out, it's something different that you're supposed to do to be healthy. Um, and these are all what we call external motivations. These are things that are, you know, not from within reflecting your own values and needs. These are things that are <laughs> reflective of what you're being sold um, or what our societal expectations or what your friends are doing and so on and so forth. And these aren't great motivators when it comes to health behaviours. So we do know that for <laughs> creating and sustaining motivation, some of the best motivators are the, what we call internal motivators. So these are things that are important to you um, and they're important to, to, to attain. So there might be things like um, being able to, to do something well or having a goal in mind, like being able to, to run 5Ks or lift a certain weight or achieve a pose in yoga. Um, there are things like health, for example, if you, you know, are trying to make sure that you are, um, you know, treating your high blood pressure, <laughs> that's what, you know, that's what I've had to do in the past. You know, those kinds of things are, are better, more sound motivators. Um, and they do tend to lead to, to longer, uh, more sustained, um, more sustained motivation, relying on those sort of external things, like looking a certain way, fitting into a dress or a pair of jeans or getting a bikini body or something like that. They do tend to result in less motivation, particularly over time. They might give you that kickstart to begin with, but then they do tend to wane with time. They can also have side effects. They can make it so that you are completely a motivated to, to exercise because you're trying to attain something that is sometimes not attainable. They can also have really nasty side effects like poor body image, um, disordered eating. So we'd like to try and move away from those, those kinds of superficial type things um, into to things that are more, more attainable and sustainable for you. Stay with us. We will be back in a moment. You just made me think about the wellness industry. I mean, it seems that once the wellness industry kind of exploded, suddenly we became obsessed mm. with health to do with, you know, wearing our latest PE Nation, which I do love their gear, by the way, but just wearing <laughs> PE Nation, drinking smoothies. I mean, we've seen health explode in a different way. So how can we shift our thinking you know, I suppose still being concerned about it. I mean, the basic tests, I mean, there's there's a study out there that said even the mm -hmm. average woman hasn't been for a high cholesterol test, her pap smear. I mean, yeah. we're crying that we're so busy, but we're not even going, I mean, have, has everyone got their COVID vaccine yet? If, if you're in those certain age groups, whereas it's, if you're in, yeah, you know, yeah, but I've bought the latest, you know, tights from PE Nation or whatever, but I've drunk mm. my green smoothie mm. this morning and I, I, it's kind of this blurry cloud of what actually is health. So how can we kind of, I mean, is it a, a fact of just being mindful with our decisions or how, where, where do we yeah. go from here about wading through all the wellness and the health and because it's all kind of mashed yeah. together and made it murky? <laughs> it is. I, I don't want to shame active wear. Like, I have oh, a, no, I love a healthy, yeah. um, <laughs> I have a healthy obsession. I have also been known to be like, I'm sorry, I'm not attending that whatever because I can't wear my active wear. No, no, <laughs> I, I don't worry. Put real oh, clothes on. I put my hands up. I am the biggest active wear green smoothie. <laughs> I mean, I'm sucked in as well, but I, I love it because it makes me feel good. So yeah. that's why we do it, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, look, yeah, exactly. You know, and, and I think that's the thing. We're all sucked in. Like these things are designed to suck us in. This is again, this is not about us. This is about them. Um, but you know, I think that I, I think that it's it is a lot of marketing. It is a lot of um, uh, you know trickery to to get you to believe that in order to be healthy, you need to do it in this certain way. And we see that with activewear, we see that with fitness trends, nutrition trends, and so on and so forth. But you're absolutely right. A lot of the sort of basic healthy things that we need to do, um, we're not doing. Yeah, women don't get their pap smears, their breast checks. I mean, no, or 
you know, do your monthly um, self check of your breasts. You don't um, do skin checks. And men, and, I have and to throw in men because we and, have got lots of men, male yeah. listeners. Yeah, totally. Yeah, exactly right. You know, uh, there are so many things that we're not doing. Um, where, but we're absolutely committed and obsessed even with doing things like yeah, buying particular workout outfits or trying the latest fitness trend or and all of those things. And it's quite interesting because a lot of these, um, a lot of these things like, I mean, I'm going to talk about the female perspective because that's what I know the best, um, you know, things like, for example, having a pap smear or having um, a skin check, it's, it's a very vulnerable moment. Um, you lose a bit of your autonomy, you lose a bit of your control, you have to be, you know, to a degree undressed or naked to have that done. It's embarrassing. Um, it's, it's kind of hard to work up, for some people, work up the, the courage to go and get that done. Um, and we'll say things like, yeah, we're too busy. <laughs> In reality, is like, oh, I just really don't want that done. Um, and interestingly, I, some of these sort of focus on looking a certain way can impact quite negatively on those kinds of tests. So we know that women who have a uh, negative body image, so that's like feeling that, you know, you, you're not feeling that great about yourself, will put off having a lot of those health checks done. That's one factor. The other factor is that a lot of these kinds of health checks that we have, you know, relatively early in life. So for example, getting your blood pressure check, getting your cholesterol checked, um, they seem to be things that are going to happen down the track. So you just don't care. And we know that when we try to engage, uh, say teenagers, for example, with health programs that are directed at their health, particularly down the track, they are completely uninterested, which is probably not that surprising. Um, but it's 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 very difficult to to skate around the this idea that health is looking a certain way, um, whether it be what you wear, what you're doing, or you know, or your physical body, you know, having a six pack, looking a certain size, etc. Um, and trying to get into to the psyche to get people into the psyche that they need to be thinking about, you know, their actual, um, you know, completely objective measures of health. And the reality is, is that these are in some ways more simple than trying to chase something that you might never attain. Um, you know, for example, like you don't necessarily need to have a green smoothie every day to be healthy. Like it's, you just, you, you just don't, if you like it, you know, go for it. If that's how you're getting your fruit and veg, you know, go for it, but you don't actually need to, to be doing that. The simplest things, um, the most unsexy, <laughs> unmarketable, really boring things for your health are actually the most important. Yeah. And sleep, sleep, as you said before at the and beginning, sleep, sleep, sleep and, sleep. and <laughs> yeah. So I, in your book, I mean, you wrote it a few years ago, but you've got these these lovely tips for how to be pretty healthy, and that's what we're all about at Healthy is mm -hmm. how to be pretty healthy. Mm -hmm. So ha can you just share mm -hmm. a few of them with us? How can we be healthy-ish slash pretty healthy? <laughs> um, yeah, look. I it's super boring advice. Like it is not the stuff that <laughs> you're going to be, you know, clicking on, on Instagram because it's shiny and beautiful. Um, it's, you know, eating uh, as healthful a diet as you possibly can. Um, and that looks different for everybody else. Fruit, veg, whole grains, very dull. Um, move your body and not in any particular way, you know, anything that you do to move yourself is good. It doesn't have to be uh, you know, over strenuous, you don't have to be running a marathon or doing the latest uh, physical fitness craze, just anything that you can do for any amount of time is absolutely fine. Making sure that you're taking care of your mental health, asking for help when you need it, being mindful about sleep, you know, looking into things like mindfulness, um, you know, trying to reduce the stress in your life, very difficult to do at the moment. Um, look after yourself, not as a form of punishment for your body but as a sign of respect for your body see what you can do not what you can look like um, and I think one of the most important things for me is that we all look out for the health of people who can't um, that we demand better health whether it be health care systems or better equality and equity in our society because at the end of the day that is probably one of the biggest contributors to to our health and, and well-being. There we go. Dr Nikki Stamp, thank you so much for your words of wisdom and for coming on Extra Healthy-ish. Thank you. 
Thank you so very much for listening to this episode of Extra Healthy-ish, the big sister podcast to the one called Just Healthy-ish. Of course, both podcasts are from Body and Soul. If you want more info from us, head to bodyandsoul.com.au. And remember, you can join the conversation via Body and Soul on Instagram or Facebook. Thanks again for tuning in and for joining us this year. And if you have a moment, we'd be so grateful if you could rate, review and subscribe to this podcast. Oh, and wishing you a very Extra Healthy-ish Christmas. 